As of the market close on Friday, October 10th, 2025, Nuburu, trading under the ticker symbol BURU on the NYSE American, closed the session at 25 cents per share, marking a decline of 3.5% for the day. With the U.S. markets currently quiet before the new week's opening bell, this price point seems to tell a familiar story. A small, speculative technology company, born from a SPAC merger, now trading deep in penny stock territory. This is the expectation, a company struggling for relevance, a ticker that most people using a platform like the Robinhood app might overlook in favor of more recognizable names. But that surface-level reading misses the entire point. What the market is failing to appreciate is a fundamental shift occurring in advanced manufacturing, particularly in the production of electric vehicle batteries. While headline-grabbing stocks like Apple stock and Nvidia stock dominate the discussion on most investing sites, Nuburu is working on a very specific, high-value problem that its larger competitors using traditional technology cannot easily solve. The reality is that the physics of light absorption in materials like copper, a critical component in EVs, is creating a potential moat for Nuburu's blue laser technology that is completely disconnected from its current depressed valuation. The common belief surrounding BURU is that it's just another cash-burning venture with a niche product and an uncertain path to profitability. Anyone who has opened an individual brokerage account and watched the stock's trajectory since its public debut would see a chart that reflects this sentiment perfectly, a steep, punishing decline. Investors, whether they are self-directing their portfolio through SoFi Invest or utilizing a service like Schwab Intelligent Portfolios, have been conditioned to be wary of post-SPAC companies that fail to meet initial, often lofty, projections. The expectation is one of continued dilution, financial struggle, and the constant threat of being squeezed out by larger, better capitalized players in the industrial laser space. It's seen as a high-risk bet that, for the most part, has not paid off for early believers. This narrative is simple, easy to digest, and supported by the stock's historical performance. But let's challenge that narrative by looking at the reality of the technology and the market dynamics. The core problem Nuburu addresses is that conventional industrial lasers, which primarily operate in the infrared spectrum, are poorly absorbed by highly reflective metals like copper and gold. When manufacturing EV battery packs, for example, you need to weld numerous thin copper foils together. Using an infrared laser is inefficient and often messy. The energy reflects off the surface, leading to inconsistent welds, spatter, and potential defects that can compromise battery safety and performance. Nuburu's technology uses a blue light wavelength, which is absorbed by copper up to 20 times more effectively than infrared light. This isn't just a minor improvement. It results in faster, stronger, and cleaner welds, a critical advantage in a high-volume manufacturing environment. This is the reality that gets lost in the stock chart. The company isn't just making a different laser, it's providing a specific solution to a costly bottleneck in one of the world's fastest growing industries. Active traders using sophisticated platforms from interactive brokers understand that such technological differentiators, if they can be commercialized effectively, are where true value is created. Looking at the recent stock movement, the trading patterns tell a story of investor apathy, punctuated by brief moments of speculative interest. Over the past month, trading volume has been consistently low, often struggling to break 100,000 shares a day. This low liquidity is a double-edged sword. It indicates a lack of broad institutional interest, but also means that any significant buying or selling pressure can cause dramatic price swings. We saw this two weeks ago when a minor press release about a new system installation caused the stock to jump 15% in a single session on slightly elevated volume, only to give back those gains over the subsequent days. This volatility makes it a difficult asset to hold for anyone seeking stable returns, which is why you're unlikely to find it in many Fidelity ETFs or Fidelity mutual funds. The stock has been trading in a tight range between $0.22 cents and $0.28, cents, with the 50-day moving average acting as a persistent ceiling. A sustained break above this level would require a significant catalyst, 
likely in the form of a major contract announcement or a surprisingly positive earnings report. The institutional activity is sparse, but filings do show a few specialist technology funds holding small positions, suggesting some professional money sees the long-term potential, even if larger players at institutions like Fidelity Wealth Management remain on the sidelines. The last earnings call was a microcosm of the company's entire story. Management spoke at length about technological progress and customer engagement, highlighting successful evaluations with major automotive and battery manufacturers. They emphasized the superiority of their product in key applications. However, the financial reality poured cold water on that optimism. Revenue, while growing, remains modest, and the company's burn rate is a significant concern. They ended the quarter with a dwindling cash position, raising the specter of future capital raises that could further dilute shareholders. This is the central conflict for anyone considering an online investment in Nuburu. You have to weigh the undeniable potential of the core technology against the very real financial fragility of the business. It's a classic for those interested in self-investing who have a high tolerance for risk and are willing to do extensive due diligence beyond what a standard screener on the Fidelity mobile app might provide. So, what exactly does Nuburu do? The company was founded on the principle of commercializing high-power blue laser technology. Its flagship products are the AO and AI series lasers, which are integrated into industrial systems for welding and 3D printing. The business model is straightforward. They design and manufacture these laser systems and sell them to end users, typically large-scale manufacturers in sectors like e-mobility, consumer electronics, and aerospace. Their key innovation was figuring out how to combine the light from many individual blue laser diodes into a single, powerful, and bright beam. This technical achievement is protected by a portfolio of patents, which forms the basis of their competitive advantage. Before Nuburu, blue lasers were mostly low-power devices used in things like Blu-ray players. The company's work made them powerful enough for heavy industrial tasks. This historical context is important because it shows they are not just another hardware assembler. They are a science and engineering-driven company that created a new tool for a specific set of problems. Anyone exploring SoFi ETFs or other investment vehicles focused on advanced manufacturing should have this company on their deep-dive research list. Looking toward the future, the potential catalysts are clear and compelling. The most significant driver would be the signing of a multi-system, multi-year contract with a major automaker or a Tier 1 battery supplier. An announcement of that magnitude would serve as a powerful validation of their technology and would immediately change the financial outlook, providing a clear revenue runway. The electric vehicle industry is the key. As manufacturers race to scale up gigafactories, the efficiency and quality gains offered by blue laser welding could become a standard, moving from a niche solution to a critical piece of the production line. Another potential catalyst is expansion into additive manufacturing or 3D printing of metals like copper, which could open up entirely new markets for creating complex components for electronics and thermal management systems. On the other hand, the risks are as stark. The primary risk is financial. Without a major infusion of cash from either a large contract or another financing round, the company's operational runway is limited. This is the kind of detail that requires more than a casual glance at a SoFi trading platform. It requires reading through financial statements and understanding burn rates. Competition is another major risk. While Nuburu has a head start, established laser giants like Coherent and IPG Photonics have immense R&D budgets. If they decide to aggressively pursue their own blue laser technology, they could become formidable competitors. Finally, there's execution risk. Even if Nuburu signs a big deal, can a small company reliably scale its manufacturing to meet the demanding quality and volume requirements of a global automaker? The path from a great idea to a great business is fraught with operational challenges. Comment below with the industrial sector you believe will benefit most from blue laser technology in the next five years. 
Ultimately, the story of Nuburu is a powerful lesson in the frequent disconnect between technological innovation and stock market valuation. The expectation, driven by a poor stock chart and challenging financials, is that of a company on the brink. This view is easy to adopt for anyone managing their Fidelity IRAs or other long-term savings and looking to avoid speculative bets. The reality, however, is that Nuburu holds a potential crucial piece of technology for the future of electrification and advanced manufacturing. The market is pricing it for failure, offering little to no credit for its technical moat or the secular tailwinds of the EV boom. Whether that gap between expectation and reality closes in favor of the bulls or the bears will depend almost entirely on the company's ability to convert its technological edge into tangible recurring revenue before its financial clock runs out. This isn't a story about incremental